What's going on? My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. We've got my man Kyle McKenzie right here, living the dream in our podcast room. We're on episode 16. Super excited about it. Uh, some stuff we're going to be talking about is Atlanta tournament, Atlanta camp. Uh, we're running a CDA camp right now, uh, Indianapolis singles, Hoover, Alabama camp. Uh, Lakers just lost. Phil Mickelson just won the PGA championships. Pretty sweet. Heck yeah. Uh, coach's tip, instructional nugget. And uh, that's about it. Kyle, what's up, brother? Hey, happy to be back. I know I'm not, uh, you know, as, as good looking as your last guest, but I will try to... Uh, Try to step it up. Right. Step it up. <laughs> okay. um, but uh, uh, make sure everybody, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn those notifications on to the MacGuffin Pickleball Club YouTube channel. Uh, we have around 5,000 subscribers right now, hoping to keep uh, pumping up those numbers. Keep that number rising. Because in about a year, Jordan and Simone, I'm going to have the belt. <laughs> I'm going to have the belt. I'm coming for you, the right? Ultimate, coming for him. The ultimate uh, instructional. Uh, badass content belt on on YouTube. If they give the belts out, I don't, right, I don't, right. I don't know if they do. We're gonna that. have to make that an award. We're gonna, we're gonna, gonna take our own belt. Take it. We're gonna make our own belts. <laughs> um, but uh, just got back from Atlanta. A great time. It was hotter in heck there. I uh, had uh, some pretty good results. Was able to uh, be in three medal matches. So happy about that. And uh, to be honest, uh, it was kind of a crazy week for us. We brought our oldest guy, uh, special needs, love that man to death, but he doesn't sleep a whole lot. And uh, uh, I honestly think my level was better because it was so chaotic with having Sky, with having Banks. We flew in late the first day. We flew in, um, I usually, as most people know, I usually fly in nice and early. Uh, We flew in Monday night. Uh, The Atlanta airport was madness Monday night. Didn't get a rental car until like 11 p.m. Uh, at night, Kyle's making money right now. Watch out. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I need to shut that thing down. Um, flew in late and didn't get to the apartment. Uh, we it stayed in Buckhead. Stayed in Buckhead and didn't get to the apartment until like, I don't know, 1 o'clock in the morning, Tuesday morning. And uh, we got lost on the elevators. You know, Anyhow, uh, uh, just the, the first couple of days, we're getting used to the condo. We got Sky Man. We haven't had Sky for a while. Uh at least traveling to a tournament and coming with us, so it's a much different transition. When it's when it's just banks, it's obviously a lot easier. When you add Sky in the mix, a bit more <laughs> difficult. Love that man, of course, but uh, you know there's just a bit more to it. So um, yeah, I ended up practicing Tuesday, Wednesday. Practiced with Dan Gernot. Love me some Dan Gernot. Super nice guy, senior pro, um, lefty, and. Uh, uh, Dan had a nice little group of his tennis buddies there in Atlanta. I think Kyle uh, got yeah, some training yeah, after, with those guys after, as well. After the nice camp, guys. we played for a day, and yeah, all all good players. Dan's yeah. a, Dan's a stud, and Danny. He just has that. I love people who are gamers, right? Yeah, I, mean, I haven't, I haven't watched gamer. him much, but you can just kind of tell the way a person competes. Yeah, that they love for it, that they live it, or live for it, and love it, and uh, yeah, he's a, a good good dude for sure, for sure. Uh, so yeah, practice with Dan Granat and his whole crew Tuesday, Wednesday. Rafa was there as well. Uh, played singles Thursday, was able to uh, uh, beat Zane in, um, in three games in that winner's bracket semi, which pushed me to championship Sunday. Not going to lie. Love the format. That's love, what I was just Love the ask. championship yeah. Sunday. I'll take single elimination all day long if I win in the semis. <laughs> Only if I win. And do you like the three out of five finals? I mean, uh, honest, honest opinion on that. Uh, yeah, to be honest, it was extremely hot on that Sunday. Right. Uh, it actually worked out to my advantage because Ben kicked my ass in three, and then Riley and I ended up kicking ass in three. All right. Um, so uh, You'll take that. You know, I um, yeah, I think it's a different format, you know, and going down two games, trying to scrap back, it's tough. It's tough. I, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I'm watching the French Open right now, and I see – See guys, you know, do it pretty, do it pretty easy. Be, be down two sets. Uh, tennis is a little different, but be down two sets and win three in a row. Uh, I just think the percentage of, of individuals that can actually do that is pretty small. But uh, love the format. I think it's good for pickleball. I yep. think for the non pickleball eye to be able to watch the final matches on the very last day for it to be organized, scheduled times makes sense. Easier for for TV scheduling. Uh, I mean, I think it, especially for singles. Just my opinion. I mean. For those that have not played singles, I mean, it's entertaining to watch on TV, but 
I don't know what your take is on Tyson. I think it's way more faster, you know, when you're out there than what it looks like on TV, and it's so much more physical. I mean, we were just watching uh, just a moment ago the the sick, Indianapolis and sick. and tell the, tell the viewers it, what we saw. I mean, it was insane. It was one Dog of the best fight. one of the best matches we've seen. We just watched the finals, but uh, it was Jay against Zane, and they've played together or played against each other many times. Always been a good match, but. Uh, uh, as I understand, Zane won earlier in the day, so Jay had to double dip, and so he won in three, and then they had to play their game to fifteen. It's, and it's kind of like best out of five. I mean, yeah, to, to a certain, it is. <laughs> I, mean, yeah. I mean, as far as the physicality, yeah, right. but so long story short, Jay wins. I think it was twenty one nineteen in that sick. game to fifteen to, to complete to complete the double dip. But Zane, I mean, somewhere around eighteen all, seventeen all was cramping up and it's just yeah. it's just a lot of pickleball in one day and these are very fit guys so yeah. if they're cramping if their bodies can't handle it it just shows that as the draws get deeper as the depth and quality of players gets better i think that we do need to have more of like a championship day yeah. or a it, semis day or something it, where it's broken up into a couple separates of days the athletes yeah. and the non-athletes yeah for sure. no for, yeah right. i agree and i think as, as the sport gets like i said as the depth gets bigger where the early round matches for some of the top players maybe aren't as easy they get pushed a little bit longer um it just becomes more and more physical i think that breaking it up into a couple of days um makes sense i think so too um that was a dog fight it's complete dog fight zane's, Super entertaining. zane's cramping an 18 all um <laughs> um yeah jay played tough i mean those guys are those guys are tough as and jay's hell. had a lot of jay's had a lot of silvers right jay's, against against you know, zane and he's uh, taken zane down you know Several times, but it seems like in the bigger and the gold medal matches that I can recall, Zane's, Zane's got, the best of got the best of him. So it was good, good win Kudos for Jay. Jay. Kudos to Zane. Kind of happy for him. Mm. Don't tell him I said that. I like to give him a hard time, but poke, poke, I'm poke. a fan of his game poke, for poke, sure. Poke, poke. <laughs> um, a big, big Frenchman. No, oh, yeah, yeah, guys. Uh, I mean, and got a uh, all around package. You know. Um, Doubles, he's playing a lot better. He's starting to take a lot more court with Pat. Obviously, he had a damn good tournament uh, there in Atlanta. Took silver in, in men's, uh, lost to Riley and I. And yep. then he actually took, uh, took f uh, sorry, not fourth. He took, he was like top six in mixed. He played with Michelle Esquivel. Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually had to beat them, uh, Anna Lee and I did, to, to play Riley and Catherine in the bronze medal match. Was that a, a tight one? or uh, good, We beat them like 15-10. And okay. then also, too, sorry, Jay took bronze in singles. Okay. So bronze yeah, in yeah. singles, silver in men's, and then like fifth or sixth. In, yeah, he's, uh, he's gained a lot of confidence. I mean, pro started. prototypical athlete, he's like 6'2", six, 6'3", six, tree trunk <laughs> legs, moves well. So, I mean, it's not surprising that he started to do better, but clearly, clearly a lot of confidence, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and um, I think I think Jay's really just starting to find his game, find his identity. I think guys, the guy's got a lot of upside. Um, but anyhow, um, Zane and Jay can keep beating themselves up. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, it's going to be interesting because now I have the two, or I guess now I'm ranked number two. Um, you know, with the PPA rankings, just squeeze that in there. I, yeah, just, just, just squeeze sneak it on that in, in there. Oh, hey, by the way, where I belong. Okay. <laughs> No disrespect uh, to Zane or Jay. Hey, it, it's all, all fair all. competition, it's all, right? It's all love, baby. I mean, but, yeah. but anyhow, uh, um, uh, you know, Jay starting to, you know, is in, in points, he's right below uh, Zane. And I'm right there, too. So, yeah. I mean, two through four right now. The last thing you want, obviously, is to be on Benny's side. Uh, and right, Jay right. Has, has obviously the last couple of tournaments, uh, U.S. Open, Atlanta, he had Ben on his side. So... In the next month or so, I mean, it, you know, in the San Kameni tourney coming up, if Jay takes bronze, uh, it, it very well could be where Zane now is number four, and hmm. now it's one and four. Now it's Ben and Zane, and then Jay and I. Yeah. And uh, I think, honestly, I think I'd rather play Jay than Zane. But um, anyhow. Yeah, the Zane serve can definitely, it just puts pressure on you right from the first strike. It, it seems does. like every time. It does. But um, yeah, had a good day on Thursday, and then uh, Friday played. Uh, played mixed with Anna Lee, as the whole world saw. The girls got game. It's pretty scary. <laughs> is my, that the is that the first time you've played? It's with our them? first time playing okay, together. Yeah. yeah, it's definitely not our last. <laughs> but um, does everything well. Um, uh, like you know, is uh, she's mature. Uh, like she's in her twenties. She's professional in her interviews. She can talk tactic uh, tactics. She doesn't feel a lot of pressure. Yeah. She does everything pretty well. And I'm not gonna lie, that two-handed backhand uh, uh, roll dink cross can open up so much. And it had Jay DVA. It had Riley. It had so many guys. 
uh, on the stretch and like defending and having to hit a lift dink and, and not even being aggressive with their dink because the her her two handed backhand was pulling them out of position and was just moving them side to side and I mean she she can beat anybody in that pattern and I kid you not that pattern like I what we found out was that she was better on the left yep, and I yep. have no pride whatsoever. Um, well, I, if they reset that up to you, then you've got a ball that I sits can go up at the girl, you. and then we just swarm. You've got options. So, yeah. so what was happening was she was beating the guy cross court. The guy would hit a lifting, or the guy would reset in the middle. Mm -hmm. We could then speed up at the girl. The guy's out of position, and then it's just swarm city from there. So that opened up a lot for us, and she could beat a lot of girls head to head. Uh, she doesn't earn any great yet. Um, that's probably the next little next phase of her in. game. Yeah. Is ding, 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 and then look to. Be a little sneaky with the Ernie, or just be a little creative with her footwork going around the, going around the kitchen. But um, she's definitely athletic enough to add that in. She, I mean. um, yeah. But anyhow, uh, uh, enjoyed playing with her. The girl's a stud. For her to beat Riley like she did, had to had no disrespect to Riley at all. Riley, if you're watching this, this may hurt your pride a little bit. Uh, she is only 14 years old, but she she beats a lot of people head to head. And not a lot of people beat Riley head to head no, ever. No, I mean, right? Riley's got top you know, three hands. Easy, and, easy, yeah. and I don't know what the stats were behind the head to head battles, but I'm pretty sure she was winning the battles. Um, and, uh, and, and she does a good job, too, of um, if she does get stuck on the right, Andrea Coop has this ball, Simone has this ball, Lucy Kovalova has this ball. But she can, uh, she can roll the forehand cross well, but she can take a speed up out of the air. And instead of like taking it at the guy, she can hold it. And it's like that inside in little last second misdirect back behind the guy that, that honestly kept Riley honest yeah. and pulled him out. And then with him being pulled out, opened up Catherine, gave me some more space to go head to head against Catherine. Whether Annalie's on the left, she's on the right. The girl uh, can create a lot and can put, and put us in a great position to be offensive. Um, whether it was off of a lifting that came back at us or just simply we were in control of the of the point. Well, as a tactician, you must love having like the ability to mold her into what yeah. your team needs to have, right? right? The fact that she can play either side, bring some different weapons on either side. You can kind of sense the flow of the match and the team that you're playing against and choose the appropriate formation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the next level, right? I mean, the ABCs of mixed is, you know, put the gal on the right and they do the cross court dinking forever and the guy tries to get involved. But anytime you can break that pattern or the norm of that pattern, you can start to throw some other teams off a little bit. So For I sure. think um, if you have the ability, like you obviously do to be a tactician and to see that you can uh, put yourself in some winning spots. Yeah. And the women's uh, final, if you guys watched that on Sunday, it was it was probably it was definitely much better than our than our men's final. It was a great final, yeah. Uh, great final. Was it eight all game game five, game five just Lucy back and, and forth. Lewis and Simone, yeah. you know, barely won. Um, and and hence, you know, anytime the uh, anytime mom and daughter play, I'm pretty sure mom probably sees eighty percent of the ball, something like that. But it uh, comes to show that um, uh, nothing against mom at all. I played with mom and, and I've meddled with mom. And mom and I took bronze in Tampa. We were mm -hmm. in the bronze medal match at US Open. But uh, I think there's a lot of people who are scared of how aggressive she is off the bounce, how aggressive she is out of the air, and how aggressive just every little part of her game, whether it's dinking, it's dropping, it's driving. And, you know, when you lose a couple times head-to-head -head against a 14-year-old, it, 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 you know, nothing against Anna Lee, but I think it, no, I th it, honestly, it hurts people's pride. It does. And she uses, I think she uses that to her advantage. Yeah. I think she does. Yeah. I don't know. We were talking about this and, and maybe she's, you know, obviously she's amazing and clearly has, you know, champion DNA, but I wonder if there is something to that being young enough to where like, you know, you've got other things that you care about. Pickleball isn't your whole world where maybe you just don't feel as much pressure. Maybe you play a little bit more free because she doesn't seem scared. I, I she used, does not seem scared I, out I there, I used to she? think it was that, and then I played with her, and it's not that. She feels pressure. She's a badass. She just she fights em through it. She embraces She's it. Tough, she yeah. swallows it down, and she feels it. So maybe she it's, gets it's, that from mom, too, because mom, mom is a mom's gamer. A gamer. Mom's, mom's a gamer. gamer she sure. got a little bit of mom's DNA you know, in and there. And she yeah. plays high-level tennis. She plays high-level soccer. Um, I think she's one of those individuals where, like, when the going gets tough, uh, she can trust it and she embraces it and she uses it and she can like it's tough to trust your offense uh late in third games when it's eight all nine all you know um and that that's what she did and she trusted her offense against riley was able to beat him head to head i mean she did it all day in mixed um but good. you know but you know if the offense is your main thing 
you know, I know for me, sometimes if I feel tense or I feel a little pressure, sometimes I'll make a predetermined decision, you know, rather than to hit a drop to just rip a drive to kind of release some of that tension out of my body and then drop the next one. Maybe that helps. Maybe she's just releasing that tension left and right with slapping the ball around. Who knows? But either way, uh, you know, mad props to her. Yeah. 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 For sure. It'd be fun to watch you guys play, uh, play some more and get yeah. a little more chemistry. Yeah, I got her locked in the rest of the year. And the next year, a uh, mixture of Callie uh, and Anna Lee. Um, not too shabby not, of a not too shabby. couple partners there. But yeah, Anna Lee and I ended up winning uh, that bronze medal match, won 11-4 in the, in the third. Uh, we should have won the first game against Riley and Catherine. They ended up uh, sneaking the first game out. Second game, it was tight. Uh, I think we were down like 6-8. Uh, came eight. back, I think. Came yeah. back, won 11-9. And then game three, just rolled, baby, just rolled. <laughs> uh, Saturday, damn good day. Um, you know, I, I, I played well in singles, uh, played pretty well in mix, so kind of used that confidence, played well on Saturday. Uh, Ryan and I, uh, I mean, it was, it was such an interesting day. And, and, you know, just to let the viewers know, this single elimination format, it was nice. You know, I'm, I singles, I started at 8 a.m. Well, I got I to buy first round, so I really didn't start till 9 I played my winner's bracket semi at one. I was done by two. I was home and in the apartment and chilling with the family by 3 p.m. And you know you're a routine guy. So oh, you I love am. That. You love that's that, it. right? That's it. You that's know? a day. That's, that's, a, day that's right a good there. day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, mix. We ended up uh, losing to Ben and Simone. Ben and Simone, uh, very good team, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, you know, we, we ended up playing our, our bronze medal match at like five, got done by six, was home a little later that day. But... Uh, gender dubs or men's dubs, uh, Ryan and I, um, uh, essentially made the winner's bracket semi and we were done playing or sorry. Oh yeah. Yeah. Made the winner's bracket semi, uh, played matches from like eight to 11 AM and then had a scheduled semi at two. Mm-hmm. So we had to wait three hours yep. to play yep. Adam and, uh, Matt played Adam and Matt at 2 PM, won that match, uh, one in three it was a little barn burner. And, uh, was done by three. Was back at the apartment at four. So well, it's nice, nice to have it scheduled too, because you know when to eat. You know, nice. you know, you nice. get it's, your body primed and ready. Or to, else to it's put just your best chaos. Stuff yeah. Complete chaos. Well, because you know how it is in the tournament. Like sometimes it's just match after match after match. And, and if then, you lose early, right, and, and you're ready for it to, you're ready for it to be on again, right. and then all of a sudden there's like a random one and a half hour delay that you're not expecting, so you're not really yeah, sure how to... You just never know what's going on behind the scenes. <laughs> no, you sure. never know, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I think there's something to be said for, you know, especially those those bigger matches later in the day to know when they're going to happen, to be able to prepare for it, get that warm-up in, get ready to play your best. And I thought it was a, you know, it was the first time uh, Selkirk TV, I think... Uh, sponsored or you know was involved in pretty heavily involved in that tournament so uh kind of cool to see uh to see that and what we'll see from there going forward yes that that was the first time that uh soccer tv had their platform at least live you know um thought they did a good job i uh you know i'm not a fan of the the bird's eye camera angle we talked about this earlier Mm -hmm. watching indy uh i mean playing singles it's tough I mean, to showcase the view in any other way, you take a look at the French Open, most of the coverage is, is you know, bird's it's eye. It's all some degree of bird's eye. Yeah. 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 Um, but doubles, I, I think, uh, you know, I think uh, not to down the PPA at all. I just think they could do a better job with close-ups. They could do a better job with wide angle. Um, and and I know uh, if the soccer TV platform is going to look better, it's, it's going to be. The Are you a fan of the like the kitchen cam? I am. I am. You like I that am, one? I am. So I you think it should start bird's eye the moment eye, it gets to neutral and everybody's they, up there. Boom. Then kitchen cam from there. And I think instant replays and then close ups after like you know long points, big come ons. You know, I think it helps. I mean, as you study the game more, I think it helps you understand like the quality of different shots because you can see the height of the ball relative to the net, yeah. right? So you see when something's a flick or, you know, sure. what type of attack, what spots on the body are being hit. I think Dinking looks tremendously better. Yeah, I, just think. I agree. I think you can appreciate it better yeah. too. I mean, I know before I, you know, started playing at the pro level, I didn't even really realize that everybody was cutting the ball to the same degree or rolling it because it's just a lot tougher to tell trajectory, I think, from right. that bird's eye view. Right, for sure. Um but yeah, Saturday, good day. Uh, one and three against Ryan and Stone. Or sorry, one and three against Wright and Stone. Um, and uh, and then Sunday. Sunday was pretty cool. Uh, you know, best three out of five. I got to coach Leia Jansen. Leia's our girl. Mm-hmm. Um, she unfortunately, I'm not going to, and gosh, it's more difficult watching the sideline than it is playing my own <laughs> Nothing against Leia at all or Catherine. It, it, was, it, was, it was high level. It was yeah, just very yeah. stressful. Right. <sighs> 
just gives me a ton of anxiety. Well, it sounds like they both played well. Yeah, it, was, it was a good match. First yeah. time in a while we've seen and to see like the first women's battle out. Like the the yeah. first match to go five. I yeah, think it's kind of cool. cool. It yeah. like got the fire. You got the crowd going. You know, yeah. got the crowd all fired up. But uh, they're yeah. kind of similar players. Too. Yeah, they it was, each it was, have that variety. It was even, very even. You know, yeah. like they yeah. can. They can roll the ball on each side. Like they come to the net pretty well. They're both pretty good movers. Yeah. Like I think they're gonna, as the sport continues to grow, I can see them having a bit of a little singles back and forth rivalry. Oh, yeah. I can see that. I can see that happening for sure. Especially if, you know, Simone starts to play singles a little bit less or maybe yeah, concentrate sure. more on doubles. I think those two are. I mean, the they're both in their twenties. Yeah. You know, they're yeah. gonna be on the singles Somebody's scene. Somebody's gonna start winning more for a while. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yeah, love Catherine's game. I think Catherine over the last. Eight months, our uh, game was skyrocketed. And yep. She's got a ton of upside. She's a mm-hmm. mini Simone out there. <laughs> Leia, um, you know, uh, not to like talk too much about Leia, but she uh, she ended up talking to somebody to just kind of help her figure things out, give her a better roadmap, put some positivity into being on court. And ever since she met with that individual, um, her, her, her game and her level has gotten a lot better. So I think it's worth talking about. I mean, we're both coaches we both do a lot of a lot of teaching and you yeah. know there's the technique side and the tactics and the court positioning but sometimes what's not talked about enough is the sports psychology aspect For you know sure. and take a, a person like Leia who you know somebody's going to watch her hit a few balls and they're going to be easy to spot the talent and the variety but sometimes to put everything together you know it's, it's just a matter of you know getting to know yourself a little bit more out there getting to know you know what your hot buttons are as far as like when you feel pressure how to react you yeah. know what find some sort of a routine, and some sort of a home base. It right. gets very lonely out there, you know, when you're not playing your best. So just learning how to work through that is, is a struggle and an ongoing struggle that we all are trying to refine and, and get better at. And how many athletes are like one little piece away yeah. from perfecting uh, their craft or from being really high level, but you know, whether it's, uh, yeah, it's not being able to manage pressure or it's, being a little too tough on yourself or not finding any sort of coping method when you're on court. I mean, it's tough. Yeah. And, and if you don't, if you don't feel like you have help, it's a freaking lonely <laughs> situation out there. It is for sure. It is. And it's for not sure. fun. And it's tough to uh, swallow that stuff. And it's tough to be comfortable. And it's tough to like manage pressure and play at a high level when you feel like you're all by yourself out there. You know? Yep. Um, but, um, uh, love that girl, but uh, yeah, she played like a baller. Catherine played like a bigger baller. Um, <laughs> uh, one and five, it was like eleven nine in the in the in the fifth. If you watch that point at nine eight in the fifth, the point was sick. Uh, uh, PPA just did like a top five uh, Atlanta highlight video. Top, top five, five shots, play, top, top five, five plays. Yeah. yeah, and I think theirs was number five. Uh, Riley and I's were number one. Davey was my ATP. And it's so funny, like, so many people were like, oh, my gosh, you're such good ATP. Little did they know, it opened up so you nicely You had an ocean to hit into. I didn't have to off, do a it thing. A, it was a Everybody's court, like, right? Yeah, it, it was a net, left court. Yeah. And it rolled on the net for about three seconds and then <laughs> plopped on my side. Thank you very much. And everybody's <laughs> like, how did you, like, split them in the middle? I'm like, well, I had half of the pie to work with. I didn't have a sliver. I had half. Right, right, right. I'm going to take half the I've pie. Heard I'm going to be greedy. I've heard you talk about that in teaching, right? If, you, if they give you the whole pie. I take it. Hit the whole pie, <laughs> right? <laughs> take it. I used to say huckleberry pie. Right. <laughs> but, um. Yeah, no, it uh, it opened up very nicely for me. But yeah, Coach Leia, and then played uh, Ben right after. I felt like I brought a B minus game. He brought an A plus game, yeah. and uh, comes to show why he's number one in the world. The guy's a stud. What's um, scary when Ben, you know, Ben's style is, you know, angles, slowing the ball down, just kind of applying gradual pressure, and you know, uh, gradually, but more of a, a more of a methodical, slower game. Obviously, he can hit. Big passing shots and do a little of everything, but in that match, it seemed like he was striking the ball. Yeah, the ball was pretty real, soft. The ball was real marshal. well. Um, which when he's doing that, you know he's going to bring the hands and good luck and the angles. So good luck. Yeah, tough to tough to play him on an A plus. No, uh, no, a plus if I'm, I'm going to be in it, he's got to he's got to miss some serves. He's got to miss some returns. He's got to bring at least an A minus, right? I, I, I yeah, there's, <laughs> there's, there's no minus there's in there. no way I can hang when it's an A plus. There's no way. <laughs> yeah, it's tough. No, and even an A minus, I have to play at an A plus right. to to keep it tight. Um, that's why he's that's why he's the man. So let's uh, talk about the uh, the doubles final. I mean, so Pat and Jay they just came off beating Johnson Johns. You know, so obviously they're confident. You guys but have played them. Beat Johnson Johns in the quarters, and then played Nunnery and Barr in the winners bracket semi. Was that um, was that one pretty tight? Yeah, I was like nine and three. Or okay, it was, it was in two. Nine. It was in yeah, two. Okay, two. okay. Two. so they're riding a you know pretty dang confident. I know. I saw the interview. After their semi, and Jay's like, "Yep, we we expect to we expect to take it home." Yeah. How did you feel that that match played out compared to some other times that you played them? 
Yeah, I I knew how hot it was, and Riley and I personally feel like when it's that hot, if we can slow things down and just grind and make it suffering and make right. it very physical, you know, it's definitely going to work out in our favor. It's kind of your guys' yeah. natural yeah. style, natural element. Um, I wasn't sharp early on. Once I got dialed, I didn't miss a dink, I didn't miss a drop. Usually when those two things take place, we do not lose a match. Um. And, uh, yeah, so was, was able to, uh, drop well, dink well, um, you know, first game was kind of tight. Uh, you know, I, honestly, you I, You guys uh, were down the first and then yeah, came back, like right? throughout yeah. the whole tournament, I kind of had this motto of, of thinking, Hey, like, it's not about how you start. It's about like the last quarter of each game and right. how, like, if I can, you know, if I'm playing, uh, at like a B minus game and I can just raise it like 10, 10 or 15% and just be a little cleaner, not make any freebies, not make any unforced errors, tighten things up and raise the level at the right time. And I, I used that same method in, in singles and in mixed and men's. And it just felt like my level was better late in, in late in each game. And, uh, you know, I won a tough three gamer against Zane. We won a tough three gamer against Catherine and, and, uh, Riley. We won a tough three setter against uh, our three gamer, sorry, against uh, 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 Adam and Matt. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, I think go like having that confidence and really like trying to perfect or just raise the level like 10, 15% late in games. Game one, we're down, I don't know, one six, call a timeout. We, we come back up, uh, we come back out. We were able to raise the level. It was like six all seven all game one. We really locked in, didn't give anything away past that. Ended up winning game one, like 11-8, 11-9. Game two, same thing. It's tight till about six all. Yeah. Uh, I was able to drive a couple balls middle. I was talking about today, talking about that today in, in the camp. They were unwinding. I was able to drive middle, get some freebies from that. Riley's able to disconnect. I was able yep. to disconnect, kind of be aggressive with the poach there. So game one and game two, we just kind of raised the notch, like an added 10, 15% late in both games. And didn't give much away and just played better uh, simply in both of those games. And we could tell uh, Pat was kind of breaking down a little bit. Pat was starting to get a little tired. Love Pat. Nothing against Pat at all. The guy is chiseled as could be. But there's a level of fitness. And I, I, I think the guy's very fit. But uh, it was it was hot. It was it's muggy. almost a different type of fitness. Oh right? yeah, yeah. With, I mean, you, you have humidity. to you yeah. have to be willing to like. I guess you have to be willing okay to suffer, to suffer yeah. a little yeah. bit, yeah. and you have to keep the level high as you're suffering. And I think there's players that can do that, and I don't think there's players that are um, able to do that as well. I think Pat. I think Pat's a stud. I just think in that setting when it's that hot, I've seen him physically break down in other matches. Uh, not against us, but um, anyhow. So just going into the match, that was kind of our our uh, our our theme was: hey, play better in each game. But when the when the going gets tough, we obviously know it's hot out here. We can use this to our advantage. Yeah. And like, let's move Jay around, but let's play a large majority of the balls to Pat. Really break him down. If anybody's going to feel the temperature, if anybody's going to feel physically exhausted, it's not going to be Jay. It's going to be Pat. Yeah, and you guys are probably the worst team to play if you're feeling any level of emotional or physical fatigue, right? Because you guys just don't give a whole lot away, right? Yeah, so it takes a high sure. level of emotional and mental composure um, in order to win, especially a, a three out of five. Right. And it seemed like, I mean, 11-0 in the third, right? Right, right? It's usually a telling sign that whether it be physical or mental or emotional, there's some sort of breakage if you guys were able to run away with the third game like yeah. that. And, and what, what <clears throat> dink actually worked, it was the most puny, simple dink, uh, was um, Jay, Jay was playing the right, I'm playing the right, Jay's trying to slide over, take a lot of balls, and honestly, Jay was like coming over like 70% of the way. On the he, right. Yeah, on the right, and he was taking, yeah. ball, he was taking balls off of Pat's inside foot, and he's taking backhand, so I was just kind of dinking in Pat's little quarter and making them fight over that ball off of Pat's right foot, and... Uh, they had one uh, play where, like, they both went for it. Nobody actually hit it. Jay popped a couple up. Uh, Pat made some mistakes. So it, it comes to show that even at the highest level, you find one little spot in the middle that kind of works, and you exploit that spot. And, and we actually used that spot a little bit. We ended up dropping there. We hit a few returns to that spot. Yeah. It comes to show that at the highest level, it does not have to be that complex. I think the middle dink is underrated, yeah. right? And a lot yeah. of a lot of matches, we think about you know moving our opponents around, but even at the highest levels, even with established team with good chemistry like Jay, uh, Pat and Jay, 
You know, it, it sounds like to me, if Pat's, or excuse me, if Jay's on the right and he's trying to take that much court, he's trying to kind of almost force the issue a little bit with yeah, getting involved. It was very and if that's the case, there's always going to be a little bit of confusion. The person yeah. on the left's going to lean into that, expecting to take that forehand. So, yeah, right. good, good recognition and just shows that, like, it doesn't have to be this crazy, complicated no, pattern to change things Fun. up. Just switching to the, even the same player, just switching to their other foot might be enough to yeah. keep you consistent, but to just throw them out of their rhythm just a little bit. Make your drops, make your dinks. Don't give much away. Hands uh, ready. Uh, get, yeah. keep, keep the hands ready. Find a few things that work. Find, find the gains that work. Uh, find a gain on the return. Find a gain when you're dropping or driving. Find a gain once you get up. And uh, if you can raise the level just 10% late in games, I kid you not, that's a freaking winning formula. But uh, overall, yeah, great weekend uh, on that Sunday. Like I said, it was, uh, it was very hot. So with that being said, the ball was soft. The air was thick. Hands beat battles. It's tough to put the ball away. Singles, tough to get depth on the return. Yeah. I think that was uh, one of the things that I was missing in that match was I just wasn't getting low enough. A little, little tip for the viewers here. Um, two things that I noticed when it's that humid and even with a Dura ball, when it's that soft, uh, the ball doesn't bounce. You have to sit your butt down a bit more, find your most athletic self, really get that center of gravity down, especially in singles or even in doubles, just getting like the return deep enough and neutralizing. Um, like I, fo I uh, felt like I wasn't down enough. I wasn't able to get the right amount of depth because I just couldn't get my legs involved because the ball is not, you know, jumping up. And you kind of have to break your technique a little that's bit. What, yeah, like, you know, say, something you know. we was like, we talked about US Open. Like <laughs> and I know when you're a that, technique junkie. I am. Right? You so know, I am. Fighting against <laughs> the grain. When it's, when it's that hot and, uh, and the ball is that soft, you have to swing out of your shoes, your, your volley technique, instead of it being here, you kind of have to break it and yep. get a bit more extension. Just all in all, you have to just add a bit more umph. You probably have ball. to trust the timing, too, of the return of really letting it get into you. You do. Because if you get overextended or jumpy yeah, at all, flicks there's just short. nothing on yeah, that. And then, you, yeah, yeah, and then yeah, you're, you're yeah. at the mercy of, of a big old ripping ground stroke right. at, at, at that level. Something so. we know is that on the return, if you let that thing get into you and uh, you can get your arm moving through contact, easier to get depth on that punch volley. Um, same thing. Let that sucker get into you and then go, go through it. Get that good, easy power going. Yeah. Um, I, uh, it's, and it was funny. I was, I was on this kick for a while that like on my punch and on my return, I had to get so much extension and there's, there's, there's times where that works, but I think like looking at when technique, like, I feel like, yeah, I mean, just like what Kyle mentioned, technique breaks down a lot yeah. when you get really extended. And then when you get extended, your wrist wants to start overusing. Um, and, uh, we, we see it as people are dinking. We see it with their volleys. We see it on the, on the ground stroke. If you get too extended, it's very natural to want to start compensating there. So, uh, yeah, I was kind of on a kick for a while to try to get lots of extension. Now I'm back to, like, hey, I can get a lot more depth. I can get a lot more easy power. And I can do in. a lot less on my punch right. if I just keep this short and tight and very explosive and by the body versus, like, you know, all that lag. Yeah, it's a fine line, right? Because if it's too close to your body, the wrist tends to take over right. a little bit, Right, it is a fine right? line, for but sure. But if you're out here waiting, yeah, you can get it down. But if there's nothing on it, you know, that's, that's just you're at a level where that's not going to get it done either, right? So you got to find that happy medium, elbow bent, give yourself the ability to move through contact a little bit. Right. Okay, we had we had a camp at Atlanta on that Monday, Tuesday. Uh, campers that were there, appreciate you guys. Had uh, 24. Yeah, we had a big camp. Great yeah. time. God, it was, it was hotter in hell on that Monday, <laughs> Tuesday. And I was walking around. Like a man on crutches. I was so freaking sore. And we, and we, and, yeah, and we had, I haven't we, seen you that tight. We had stadium <laughs> court. So it was kind of a pain in the ass. So we had state, we had three courts on stadium court and then all the courts were spread out. So for some reason, uh, with this, uh, particular camp, the courts were spread out. So with that being said, there was a lot more roaming. And, uh, as most coaches know, and like we've talked about, like it's so much easier to roam, especially in that teacher-student yeah. setting when all the teachers are doing the right thing and you can walk down a line of courts and they're all uh, acting as a teacher, doing the same stuff. And then you, you can walk on the student side. The students have a very specific topic that they're working on. Anyhow, you can differentiate if the court's lined up um, by either walking or coaching by the teachers or walking and coaching by the students. In this case, uh, there was none of that because the courts were so spread out. So I'm sore as hell. I'm going up and down those stinking stairs. And uh, <laughs> God, it was hot. Jeez. Run those stairs, Tyson. Jeez. Get moving. 
and I, I'm just getting flashbacks to like sucking pond water <laughs> on sta- on center court playing Ben the prior day. And um, uh, anyhow, I mean, beautiful club, had a great time, 24 campers, rocked, rocked and rolled over two days, um, used Adam Stone the first day, yep, yep. Uh, also used Kyle here and John Sperling, and uh, the boys went to work. That was a fun group. That was a fun was group a fun of group. instructors. And it's funny, you know, I think we talked about this, is, you know, a little coach's, coach's tip is, you know, there's the tactical and the court positioning and technique and all that, but, like, on a hot day, like, it's your responsibility as a teacher to bring that energy, bring that positive energy. Me too. And towards Me the too. end of the day, Talk about that. It, you know, Adam and I were down on stadium, which, we, you know, the idea of playing on stadium was great, you know, in theory, but we're making the campers go up and down these stairs a couple of times. Much. On day two, we just kept everybody up top. But I know Adam and I, you know, and for those who know Adam, he's a super charismatic guy, oh, yeah. good sense of humor, but we were, we were fighting our best to bring that energy because everybody was just kind of seeing stars a little bit with the with the heat and the humidity but uh yeah. great camp overall and uh, yeah. i think everybody uh everybody had a good good time yeah i think uh, if it's that hot too uh during those group discussions or during the skills portion obviously have your campers sit in the shade yep. Yep. and i would spend more time during the skills portion um but once you send them out if they're suffering uh, they obviously need a little added energy. So just like what Kyle mentioned. Yeah, if it's that hot and that humid, uh, as a coach, spend more time during the skills portion. Obviously, more more water breaks. Mm-hmm. Always have the students bring their water to their courts. Anytime they're bumping up, mopping down, bring their towel, bring their water. Extra bathroom breaks. And bring the freaking energy <laughs> as a coach. If they're suffering, they need a little pick-me-up. Yeah, heck yeah. And, uh, you know, so I think... Um, uh, and and it's, it's, it's tough to be sharp as a coach when it's, when it's that hot, too. Uh, so I think just as the students are taking water breaks and bathroom breaks and stuff like that, the coach, same thing. I mean, anytime you have a little time, get some water. Uh, when you're when you're coaching, if you can stand in shade just to kind of help a little bit, I I try to do that. Um, um, but you know, I do that on a uh, minimal basis um, with shade and water because obviously we're there for the campers. Um, but uh, yeah, no, it's always always kind of tricky uh, when it's that hot. But uh, I think, yeah, first and foremost, bring the energy, have some fun with them. Um, and, uh, and, and, and it's kind of funny, too. Coaching when it's that hot, it's suffering. But you've got to think about, like, you know, our, our camp format, it's six hours a day. Yeah. Like, if I'm suffering, they are suffering. I've but got a to, lot more, too. I've got to I wake mean, my they're, they're, they're moving for, around. For, for, right, for you know sure. I mean? Some of sure. our campers are, you know, over 50. Oh, yeah, of right? course. So, like, course. It's, it's, you know, when we're trying to have good form on everything that we're doing, it's a lot more physically demanding yeah. as well. So, yeah. if we're ever feeling it, they're feeling it at least twice as much. And it's kind of your responsibility as the coach Pick to kind up. of set that standard for, for that energy level, and they'll feed off of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we ended up coming back to Coeur d'Alene right after. Um, or actually, Kyle obviously went back to uh, his home in Spokane. I came to Coeur d'Alene. And then Mr. McKenzie here went to Hoover, Alabama. Yeah, heck yeah. Hoover. Yeah, it was pretty cool. It was, uh, so I'll, I'll admit, you know, when you do, do a lot of these camps, you just kind of find out, all right, I'm going to be at this center or that center. And, you know, I'm researching it the day before. Like, all right, where am I? Oh, yeah. Uh, but I showed up and it was kind of blew me away. The Findlay Center there in Hoover, um, Big old, almost like a stadium environment. So indoor gym floor, not the best for playing, but for coaching. And I uh, actually really don't mind it, you know, if we're going to uh, challenge, you know, some of the, the 3035 players with some tougher shots like blocks and resets and whatnot. It's it's nice to be able to use a softer ball to help them see some success right. a little bit earlier. But it was a cool uh, it was a cool atmosphere. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, coach's tip. And, and Kyle just touched on this. Um, coaches, if you are coaching with a Dura ball and you're working with lower levels and your uh, uh, students are having a hard time putting dinks in play, putting drops in play, you know what ball to go to. Go to that Franklin yeah. X40, baby. Help make them, them see some Make success. them feel good. Yep. Uh, nothing wrong with that. I mean, because no, if they're discouraged because they can't it's keep a, a ball very down, right? Ball. If, they're, if they're discouraged because they can't keep a ball down or they can't see that success or see that progress, uh, they're not gonna they're not gonna excel or, or, or progress in the same way. That is half of the battle when yeah, they can so. see it, and they can see it by using a ball that's uh, easier to play with, that's more cooperative. Why not? I mean, taking a look at the level of pickleball at the U.S. Open, it was sick. It was sick. It was <laughs> it was it was, a, it was a notch above any popped tournament. Up, think, any tournament attack, with, reset. Right, didn't matter reset. if you popped up a ball in green or not. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but but just the level, like it, I mean, like the transition from defense to offense, um, the hand speed battles instead of three or four balls, it's five or six. Uh, long, scrappy, grindy, suffering points. 
I mean, it's fun to watch, you know? Yeah, I hate the Franklin no, ball for my game, right? It's, I want, it's a greasy ball. I want ball. that ball to get popped greasy. up and be able to put it away once, right? But yeah. from a viewer standpoint, it's, it really does make some, exci- yeah, for the some exciting for The Newman special. The Newman special. Just call it Newman ball. Newman, Newman ball. ball. Newman okay. ball. <laughs> um, Hoover. Uh, Lakers just lost. Uh, broke my heart. I'm a huge Lakers fan. Okay. First time uh, Braun has lost a first-round playoff series. First time. Yeah, it was a tough one to predict because the Suns were Sunday good all day. year round. I mean, Paul they had that, that uh, a little bit younger. They had that chemistry, but the Lakers were the defending champs, and they were injured for a lot. LeBron yeah. was out for a lot, yeah. so you well, kind of they, they had kind to of play expected the they were in. getting the ready to tournament. yeah, getting ready to peak come playoff time, but it just didn't seem like they had that that same chemistry that they had the the year before. And I saw an article where you know, I mean, it's obviously arguable, but. Um, said, you know, maybe this is the first time where LeBron is not actually the best player on the on the planet, and that uh, that title is up for grabs. and And I think that uh, I think that's reasonable. He's thirty six, I want to say yeah, now. So yeah. you know, he's been the the main guy for for quite a while now. So next uh, topic here um, is a little opposite from what we just <laughs> spoke about. Phil Mick, uh, uh, Phil. Uh, Mickelson? Phil Mickelson, yeah. Phil Mickelson ended up just winning the uh, PGA Championships, and age does not matter. Come on. Age doesn't matter in golf. <laughs> it's just a number, yeah. Age doesn't matter in golf. <laughs> uh, like, age doesn't matter uh, when you're playing pickleball, and you, <laughs> and you only have to cover 10 feet. Huh? Age doesn't matter in golf or doubles pickleball. Yeah, no, right. just kidding. <laughs> Um, pretty cool. Uh, I don't think he was expected to win. Uh, comes to show the guy still got game, and the guy still got heart. Yeah, I don't think his ranking or, you know, world ranking was anywhere in the top, I don't know, 50 or so. And so wasn't on anybody's radar. I think I made the analogy. That'd be like Marson coming out of singles retirement and beating up on you and Ben. The which, Polish uh, monster. Hey, Marson, I know I don't know you well, but we're all still waiting. Hey, we're all still I waiting. Wanna, we we want to see it. We I do. See it. Uh, I do. I, uh, I just want to win over Marson because uh, I think I'm like 0 for 4. Have, did you play him quite a few times? I mean, I the know you last, played him in the, the last fi- time the, the that national I played finals. him. The last time that I played him tight, was right? at his home club. Okay, I was up nine eight game three games. So I'd lost game two. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Crazy story. Uh, 2017. Um, I had just lost to Marson in the finals of nationals in 2016 in okay. November. Four months later, five months later in March, play. Marson in the winner's bracket final at his home club at the Lakes. He hasn't been beaten two years. I <laughs> lose the first game. I'm down 0-8 in the second game. You got it going. Grind my way through. <laughs> find the forehand. Found some daylight with the forehand. Uh, uh, one game, two. Game three, just a gut fest. We're both suffering, dying. And, I mean, it's kind of sad because the guy is 15 years older than me. <laughs> And I go into literally, I go into Frankenstein, complete Frankenstein, full body cramps. Your body fails before his do, does. Do, do. I mean, excuse me. I I was in the beginning stage. I was in like stage two of a of a freaking heat stroke, seeing stars, seeing particles in the air, uh, uh, dizzy as could be. Next thing I know, my stomach turns on me, and then I hit the deck, full body cramps, neck, butt, hands, everything. Uh, I take a 15 minute timeout. When I went into full body cramps, I was up. I was up nine seven game three. Nine seven game three. This guy yeah. hasn't been beaten two years. Okay, that was I, your I, moment. That I was, was your the guy. Moment. I was the guy. Of course, the moment got to me. I got too excited. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, I haven't cramped like that ever, ever. I was a hurting puppy. Yeah. Any, anyhow, injury timeout. Took a 15 minute timeout. Uh, was still cramping at the end of the end of the 15 minutes. Said, "Screw it, I'm gonna go out there. Uh, I'm gonna gut this thing out." And I, my very first return, literally hit the bottom of the net. It was, it was so bad. Marson, <laughs> that didn't feel. Marson right. served. I hit a return that hit the bottom of the net, and that's that's uh, uh, eight nine, right? Okay. Marson serving on the right. Marson, like, I'm basically crying. I'm in full body cramps. I'm just trying to, like, get my ass over to the baseline on the right side of the court, right? I can barely get there. Okay, I finally get there, get in my ready stance. I'm just cramping all over. Uh, uh, right? And, and literally, Marson ends up missing a serve at the bottom of the net because he's just, he's so sad because he sees me Subconsciously, he feels suffering. bad for you. Right. <laughs> I get the ball back. I'm like, okay, here it is. Now, now's, now's, now's my moment. Here it is. Uh... 
I served. He hits a return. I have nothing in my legs. The third ball goes nowhere. Yeah. I end up losing the match quickly. I lost 9-11 in the third. Marson felt so bad for me. He bought me a two-hour massage right after. <laughs> and then that's a class. And move then right Kyle there, Yates. Folks. Yeah. I beat Kyle Yates 0-1 in the semis. Jeez. Kyle Yates then doesn't play me in the bronze because I'm totally oh, out of it. You're, you're oh, I, I was out of commission. And then Yates. And then Yates beats Marson. Oh beat yeah, I didn't know it was beat that, him. Uh, beat him in tournament. two. Yeah. And then the gain of fifteen rolled. Marson had nothing left in the tank. Yeah, yeah. I think I actually watched. That was before I was yeah. on the scene, yeah. and match I was trying six. to study all these top singles oh, yeah. guys to see what that level looked like. I think I yeah. watched that match. It's crazy. That's, that's the last time, man. I I love Marson. He's a good dude. I've got a lot of respect for that man, the Polish monster. Probably a pretty tough guy to pass. I would tough imagine. guy to pass. Wingspan. Tough guy to pass. Okay, coach's tip. Uh, coach's tip. Coach's tip. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to just coaching when it's when it's hot out and how to manage your stuff and stuff like that. So uh, three key things. Um, during that skills portion, I would take more time. Um, obviously, the campers need some more time to get some rest and things like that. When it's hot, I would take more time, put them in a shaded area. Uh, anytime you send them out, anytime they're rotating around, they always have their water. They always have their towel. Yep. And then as a coach, if you know it's hot, it's tough to be sharp. We, we all know that. But one thing you're in full control of is bringing the energy. Bring baby. that energy. Bring the energy. And maybe even more king of the court style games yep. when it's that hot. So you can manage the court. You can have six people on the court. Yep. King side, challenger side, and freaking ramp up the energy. Bring that up that ramp it tempo. Up. up that tempo. Yeah. Um, I'll go a little bit more... Uh, you know, uh, tactical, I guess. Uh, so one thing I noticed, we just got done uh, teaching day one of the uh, the camp here in Coeur d'Alene. And even uh, some of the intermediate level players, just uh, a pattern and maybe a mistake with shot selection. So uh, speaking from the perspective of when we're returning serve. So we return serve, we get into the kitchen line, our opponents are back, they're hitting drops, we're trying to keep them back. That's the right mentality normally. But at some point, we've got to give our opponents credit when they play a really good drop right. or they make us contact it down below our knees in our red zone. If our opponents are on their way in or especially if they've just played their last shot from mid court or they're already starting their path forward, they put it at, uh, below our knees, we're contacting it from our red zone. I just don't think it's the time to keep thinking, keep your opponent back. You're hitting from a low trajectory. You're now hitting low to high. Very often your opponents are gonna crash in. They're gonna be able to hit that ball up at their shoulders and give you a nice little plastic tattoo. So remember there is a time and a place to hit that surrender button when it's down at your red zone. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, listen, like you know, I've tried keeping you back, but I'm still gonna just play something unattackable. You're still gonna have to beat me in a dink setting in order to beat me and to win this point. So make them beat you twice. The first the right. first win is being able to neutralize, that's fine, but they still have to beat you in that dink setting to be able to earn that point against you. And like we always talk about. Think about the percentage being won uh, by unforced errors compared to forced errors. Yep. So in that in that particular setting, uh, there's no need to uh, to be overly aggressive, um, you know, because uh, everybody puts their underwear on the same way. Ben, I believe, puts his on backwards, but uh, all good. <laughs> he has a fancy method. My instructional nugget, and uh, you know what? I, I think coming from like, I feel like uh, anytime I come off a tournament, I usually use a tournament experience to a certain degree for the instructional nugget. Um, something new that I uh, went into the tournament thinking and just sp uh, spoke with Kyle about this was uh, it's not about how you start the game. Um, obviously, you want to you start out with a clean pickleball, uh, using your strengths, uh, wrapping your game around what you do well, trying to implement uh, things that are going to force your opponents to feel uncomfortable. That all makes sense. Um, you know, Think about where you're going to hit the return, where you're going to drop or drive, and then once your gain, uh, what's your gain going to be once you get up? Can you outdink them? Can you beat them head-to-head? Um, but from a tactical standpoint or just looking at, you know, um, looking at like the duration of a match, there's nothing wrong if you have a bad start. Uh, and something that I noticed in a couple of our matches with Riley and I, you know, I had a bad start uh, against Adam and Matt game one. Yep. Uh, I was able to raise the level towards the end of game one. We ended up losing game one, though. Um, after that, since I was so focused on just playing better late in game one, I came out game two, the level was there. Way sharper. I came out yep. game three, I was sharp as hell, um, against, uh, you know, Jay and Pat, same deal, came out slow, came out sluggish in game one, was able to raise the level late in game one, won game one, um, and just didn't give, didn't give stuff away, 
uh, went to things that were very successful, patterns, uh, picked on one particular person, uh, you know, when the ball had to be put there. But plain and simple, we just worked things around in a careful manner uh, where we were using the right shot selection. We weren't giving stuff away. We're doing all the right stuff. We're making our drops. We're making our dinks. And we're bringing the energy just a bit more. I think that that plays a big part is yeah. raise the level, but freaking bring raise the energy. The energy too. And yeah. let your opponents know that you're bringing the energy late in games. Make them feel it, yeah. Have an energy. I mean, so one thing that Anna Lee uh, said a lot in all of her interviews is, hey, like when we bring the energy, we're a tough team to beat, you know? And I think Riley and I too, like when we bring the energy, yeah. we're a tough team to beat. Uh, right. When we're playing well, I mean, even Riley and I, like even like a B minus game, if we bring energy, we're still a tough team to beat. So uh, play, don't focus on how you start, focus on how you finish, raise the level 10%, don't give much away and bring the energy late in games. Yeah, for sure. And I think, you know, visualizing that, just kind of piggybacking on that. If you're thinking about how you're going to finish the match, then you're not tight or worried if it's close, right? Because you've been thinking and visualizing about how to finish and to finish strong. So you're not like, oh, crud, I hope I don't screw this up. This is closer than it should be because you've already expected to play some pressure points um, because you've visualized success in that moment. I think it's a, a big part of being successful consistently. For sure. Okay, we have our camper dinner, and campers are downstairs. We thought, <laughs> we thought we'd squeeze in a quick little episode, episode 16. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you guys have any questions for episode 17, when we post this video, feel free to uh, 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 list your questions in the comments below. Appreciate all the support. Make sure to like, subscribe, turn those notifications on. Mr. McKenzie, any last notes here? Yeah, nothing. I was glad to be back, and we'll uh, we'll see you guys next time. My name is Tyson McGuffin. This is the McGuffin Show. I hope you guys enjoyed episode 16. If you see the speed up and your hands are ready, it's probably going in. But if it's going through you and if it's going through you and you don't have time to get your hands up, there's a much easier way. You will never know until you. Let one go.